So first of all, yes, I'm aware this video is going out on the 1st of April, but I'm not going to do something for the day. Certainly not going to tack it on to the start of this video, and there are a number of reasons. Firstly, the only things I could really think of were something as outlandish as starting a podcast about artisanal paint thinner made from artisanal cheese, from artisanal cows, etc. It was going to be ridiculous, something of that magnitude, or I'm quitting YouTube. I'm not big enough that anyone would really take note of that. Let's be honest, this isn't a humble thing, it's, it's truth. So it's never going to feature on a listicle of great pranks, and again, wasn't that great a prank anyway. There's not really any point to that. Second of all, this video will exist, hopefully, well past its air date. So, yeah, one time a year it works, but otherwise, it's done. I'm not going to burn an upload slot for a whole video that isn't going to work for the rest of the year. But lastly, and I think most importantly, I don't want to sully the subject matter. This is a serious thing, and whilst I do have little glib moments, I know... I don't want to compound on that with something ridiculously over the top just to fulfill a calendar obligation, I suppose. Not something I really want to do. So without further ado, let us talk about The Slap. For those who, like me, don't tend to pay attention to celebrity news, and don't worry, this isn't some long con, this isn't the joke. I'm not pivoting to celebrity drama or anything like that. It is media adjacent. And the more I've looked into this, and I've watched it before this recording session, the more I really want to talk about some deep -ish issues here. Because, yeah, on the surface, it's someone got annoyed at someone making a joke about the wife. Not that interesting, really. And that would be, you know, just drama, gossip kind of channel material. But there's more here. There's definitely more here. And up front, I'm not commending the action at all. I'm in praise of the fact he was, you know, going to defend his wife's honour. It's a bit antiquated, but chivalry isn't dead, clearly. And that's good to see, in a way. But the action itself, yeah, shouldn't have happened. So that's my stance on the actual incident. Chris Rock has, as I've last seen, still kind of said he's processing it. He's not, at this point at least doing anything to prosecute or anything like that. He's being the bigger man, as it were. Will Smith has come out and apologised. Sections of Hollywood have commended him... For, uh, not commended. Condemned him for it. They have similar letters in. And some have kind of said, OK, yeah, I get it. Kind of like my stance. But really, there's a lot here. The brief overview is Chris Rock made a joke about G.I. Jane 2 featuring Jada, effectively. And what got me watching it, actually, before this, was something I read somewhere, where, when the initial joke landed, Will Smith was seen to be laughing. And Jada rolled her eyes and looked very much like, I haven't heard this a thousand times before. It's a very hackneyed joke. I will definitely agree with that. But then, after a pause, Will Smith gets up and slaps the guy, goes back to his seat and starts shouting, you will keep my wife's name out of your mouth. There are other words in there, expletives, but I'm not putting them here. And the crowd is very silent for a while. Unfortunately, the night does get back on track and it goes off without a hitch. That Will Smith should not have been in a film called Hitch. That just sounds like I'm making a glib joke again, doesn't it? But it wasn't. It, the whole night goes off without any further issue. There we go. And like I say, this isn't normally something I'd talk about. But there's a few elements at play that really spoke to me. And there's one thing that I read one way and I think now have interpreted an entirely different one. If nothing else, it was following on from a joke about Javier Bardem and his wife. So there's already been a joke about people in the audience, which is the lowest form of comedy. If your comedy is all about your audience, but the Oscars are an edge case for this because everyone there is there in the hopes of winning an award and joking about who's in the audience and their works that's been out in the last year or so is kind of fair game in that environment so whilst it would normally be bad humor you know and low effort it makes sense contextually this is what i'm saying there's a lot more here 
that I think people aren't looking at the nuances. And that's why I wanted to chime in. So Will Smith just caught up and maybe didn't fully process what was said. But his wife's reaction made him realise, oh wait, hold on. Right, no, that's not fine. The other side of it is maybe he was not so much caught up in the moment, but he realised that he had to put on an appearance. He is a funny man. He's meant to be, we see him as this light, fun guy. And if he's there just, I'm going to deck you face on, that doesn't portray that image. He's there to try and win the next award coming up, I think it was. So he he doesn't want to do that. But then seeing his wife's upset again, goaded him into action. So either way you look at it, that moment where he does have that laugh, it's understandable from two different angles. And both of them make perfect sense. There is a fact that I wasn't aware of at first, but reading again further into it made me realise actually just how poor taste the joke was. Like I say, it's a very hackneyed joke. Someone with short hair, who's a woman, especially a very close to the head kind of cut, you immediately do think of things like G.I. Jane, etc. So, yes, I understand why his brain went to that. However, in 2018, I believe, she came out and said, I do struggle with alopecia. So she has a condition that affects her hair. Now, there is a term in comedy called punching down. You've probably heard of it. And that's the idea that if you make a joke about something, you've either got to have a really good understanding of it, or it's not got to be something that's beneath you. Hence punching down. Things like non-disabled comedians joking about disability there's a great woman who i absolutely adore she's funny at default level but then she laughs about her own disability and that is rosie jones she's great and there's a lot of times where she says just like as she can tell from my voice i suffer from being she can joke about that. She can joke about that. Other people with similar conditions can joke about that kind of thing, but they can't joke about her having it. I would say it's, it's a grey area at the very least. So, knowing... And this is public information. It's been out for about four years by this point, basically. Knowing that she has this condition which means that she's not going to be there with long flowing locks. It's it's punching down. It's a very low blow. And I can't excuse Chris Rock for that joke. Not at all. There is a level, and you don't go below that level, and he did. He's very much in the wrong. However, there's nothing legally preventing making that kind of joke and I don't think there should be I just think that comedians should try harder I don't remember who said it there was a quote I saw the other day that was actually not at all related to this it was weird that it came at the right time about how you can joke about anything but you've got to make sure that it's something people are going to laugh at and something that people aren't just going to hate you for you can joke about absolutely anything you just got to be prepared to accept the consequences. When people say, I can't do this, I can't do that. You can do anything you want. It's just they have consequences. And this is a thing that I think people forget. Which also leads me into the last point I wanted to make about this incident. We've all been away from social situations for a while. A lot of us have become desocialized, I guess you could say. I don't know if that's a proper term. Someone who knows developmental sciences, I guess, would probably be able to correct me. But we've all got an element of it. We don't act normal, or as we used to. Whilst a lot of us have returned to our places of work, or to social life, etc., we've still got a bit of learning to do, because we've gotten used to, I can go out in just, like, sweatpants that I've been wearing for five days while I've been lounging on the couch next to my laptop in case... I get work come through. That's right. That's okay, right? 
But I think maybe there's an element of that at play here. In our own comfortable environments, we can get annoyed at anything without fear that someone's going to see it and do something about it. We can let our defences down a lot more. So then when we're finally out in a big... Because obviously he's worked, I'm sure, over the last couple of years to get films like the one that he was there for out. But those are still very controlled environments. He's not really been out in a quote-unquote social setting. I think of at least anything of this magnitude for a while. Neither of most of those people in that room, probably. So I think there's an element of desocialization or whatever whatever the proper term is. I think he forgot how to act. And I know I'm saying that with a weird smile on my face, but it's because it's true. Like a lot of us, we're probably in these situations and we are a lot closer to punching that annoying co-worker than we would have been a few years ago. But we've just got to remember that we can't do that. We've got to remember how to be in the world. So, like I say at the start, I don't commend the actions. I commend the intent behind the actions. But I also think that this isn't a time for condemnation or commendation. This is a time for understanding, for looking inwardly as much as outwardly. And the fact that he's apologised, the fact that he's understood that that was not a good thing to do. The fact that he's taken that on board and said, hold hands up, yeah, really shouldn't have done that. I can't take it back. And that's the important thing. Anyone who belabors the point on something should happen. If Chris Rock doesn't want to prosecute, I'm not sure what the Oscars or the Academy itself, should I say, can do. Because if the injured party can't prosecute, I don't think there's a legal thing that the Oscars or the, the Academy can do in this situation. But I don't know. They are looking into it as I last read. But if the injured party doesn't want to take it further and the offending party has taken responsibility... That's it. We just learn from it. Let them learn from it. Chris Rock, get better material. Will Smith, remember you're in public. Control yourself. Unfortunately, you know, you are a public figure and you have to take that on board as well. And everyone move past this. And I say everyone. Don't take the low-hanging fruit. Don't make fun of people who have different lifestyles or difficulties to deal with than yourself unless you've lived those things you cannot make those jokes and like i said before really only when you're talking about your own struggles with those things should you make those jokes anyway jada pinkett smith can make all the gi jane jokes she wants that's i think the, the the short version of this but no one else aside from those with chronic alopecia can that's the important thing here we have to be gentler to each other. We're coming back from a very difficult time in our lives, and really we've gone from one very difficult thing into another difficult thing, although the first difficult thing isn't truly over, it's just that governments want stuff to keep happening. So, yeah, be gentle, take care of each other, take care of yourselves, and, as always, thank you for watching.